pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep, we pray for healing, for prosperity, we pray for your mighty hand to be friends happy sabbath to all of you we thank abby and annalee for singing the song blessings for us this morning and the fountain view academy for leading us in the start of our worship service today i want to say good morning to every one of you who's joining us live on youtube well so uh, I recorded this last night, but you're here on YouTube for this premiere. Thank you 
for joining us this morning. God bless each and every one of you. We thank him for another week and we're alive and well today and we continue to give him the praise, the glory and the honor that is due unto his holy name. Um, I want to just say that God has a word for us this morning that he laid on my heart yesterday as it were and um, I feel the need to share it with us today my brothers and sisters so welcome every one of you all your names some of you are familiar and if you this is your first time here today we thank you as well without further ado we get into the spoken word today our topic is buried treasure buried treasure indeed let us pray father in heaven I want to thank you for the opportunity once again to speak to your people. These are some serious times that we are living in, Lord. I want to remember families who are still suffering the effects of this terrible earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Thousands of lives lost. There are many other situations around the world that is causing loss of life. So I want to pray for grieving families this morning. Our hearts go out to them, dear Father, and the pain and agony that they're experiencing right now, from adults all the way through children perished. So may comfort, dear Father, reign in the hearts of people today. Certainly these questions go up about why these things are happening. And dear Lord, we look upon a world of sin, and the only reason we have is because of its entrance. And for that reason, dear Father, we look to a better hope, a better place, a better world, not in this current state, but in the world made new by your hands. And so, dear Father, as families are comforted this morning, our questions going up as why, just bring a measure of comfort to the hearts as they are dealing with the losses that they have experienced. And for those of us watching from different parts of the world, I pray, dear Father, that we'll be ever vigilant in these times that we are living in. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as, I, as you're listening to me present this message this morning, I may very well in the 10 o'clock hour be at the Waymark Seventh-day Adventist Church doing a lesson study on the topic, laying up treasure in heaven. And as I was putting this together for the lesson study, which no doubt I may get 30 minutes if I'm lucky, um, the Lord laid this on my heart to present this in a sermon format this morning. And so I have entitled it Buried Treasure. I want to read two excerpts from the start of the lesson today. And the reason why the Lord had me present this message today, some of you may be watching who did do the lesson this week, and wherever your thoughts were directed, some of you may be watching even after you've gone to church and you've had the lesson done and you may be taking time later on in the Sabbath day or later on in the week to watch this message. And uh, you may have some questions of your own. But my concerns when I read these two excerpts is that the many who will take these things and just teach them verbatim to God's people without a lack of, with, with a great lack of understanding and so people sometimes leave the lesson with the wrong message. And so as I see these things and the Lord lays it on my heart, I want to deal with it in an extended format today. The brethren I am dealing with right now in the 10 o'clock hour are getting an abbreviated format. But for you, I want you to really hear what God is saying to his people today. It's very important, brothers and sisters, laying up treasure in heaven. I want to read the first one. The first portion of the lesson said, Do you want a heart for the kingdom of God? If so, then put your money where it will reap eternal rewards. Put your time and your money and prayer into God's work. That's a problematic statement for me right off the bat. I want a heart for the kingdom. So the advice that I am getting is to put my money where it reaps eternal rewards, hidden message, 
if I put my money in the church, I will have a heart for the kingdom of God. That's highly problematic, saints. And if you were taught that today, verbatim, as it is said, without correction, then I'm afraid you've been taught wrong. Let's go to the book of Matthew 6.19 for the next quotation. Matthew 6.19. The Bible reads, as we know, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Then, right after that scripture, in the quarterly, in the lesson, the writer puts, in other words, I quote this, third paragraph, third and second paragraph of the Sabbath school lesson, on the Sabbath day portion. After Matthew 6.19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. Next and I quote. In other words. Show me what you spend your money on. And I will show you where your heart is. End quote. I quote this. The author said, in other words, to Matthew 6.19, show me what you spend your money on and I will show you where your heart is. That statement here may apply to some people in some areas of life. But that scripture here is, that, that, that statement here is grossly misused when it pertains to Matthew 6.19 and then grossly misused when you're teaching a lesson entitled Laying Up Treasure in Heaven. Brothers and sisters, this morning I want to deal with treasure in heaven, aka buried treasure. Because we, after all, are laying treasure up right now. And many a poor soul, upon hearing and reading statements like this, and it being echoed by ministers and elders and teachers alike, will literally give money to an institution and believe by the act of giving that money, they are laying up treasure in heaven. So we're going to deal with what treasure in heaven is and what laying it up means for the believer from the Bible, not man's intellect or man's attempt to insert his motive and idea into the word of God. Matthew 6, 19, first statement, first, sorry, first two words. Lay not, first three words, lay not up. Lay up. Meaning of the word, built up, accumulated, all right? Lay not up. Do not accumulate treasures upon earth. The word treasures is precious things. Precious things. There are things that can be more precious than money. Treasures simply means precious things. 
Now the Bible says, do not lay up, do not accumulate to yourself precious things upon earth. This has more, this is more than money. Where moth and rust corrupts and where thieves break through and steal. I want to give you an idea of thieves or stealing in the Bible that maybe the author did not care to think about and many don't care to think about because they only guard the money in the bank. They only guard the money in the wallet. They only guard the money in the treasury of the church. Let's go to the book of John chapter 10 and verse 10. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Let's understand even deeper what God wants believers to understand, brothers and sisters. The Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, he says, the thief cometh not for to steal and to kill and to destroy. God is giving advice to the sheep. The good shepherd, his son, Jesus Christ, is giving advice to his sheep. And he says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. And then he says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it, life, more abundantly. So the thief here is not just coming for your Benjamin. He says, I come so that you can have abundant life. The thief comes to steal life. The thief comes to bring death. So Jesus says, I am come to give abundant life. What brings it? The gospel. What brings it? My sacrifice. What, what brings it? Salvation. The thief comes to rob you of salvation. He says, listen, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I am the door. I am the way of determination. What is a thief and who is my servant? All that ever came before me, he says are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. The Bible is talking about more than money here. My brothers and sisters, there are things that you can put your and set your affection in here on this earth that the thief will steal, that will cost you the greatest gift you have ever known, that money itself cannot buy. Get wisdom, brothers and sisters, and further the understanding from the agendas of men. Mark chapter 4 and verse 15. Mark chapter 4, verse 15, the parable of the sower. Remember in the book of Matthew, the parable of the sower. The Bible says in Mark chapter 4 and verse 15, these that are by the way, the Bible says, these that fell by the way, the birds came up and scooped them up. But Mark chapter 4 and verse 15. These, and, and these are they by the wayside. When the word is sown, when the word is given, when the word is dispersed. When they have heard, the Bible says, immediately Satan comes. And takes away the word that was sown in their hearts.
That's why God says, when God mentions his word, when God mentions his commandments, when God mentions his statutes, God says, keep it. And people are trying to do it. God says, keep it. Keep it ever in your remembrance. Keep it ever in your heart. Appreciate the information. Because he says the evil one has orchestrated situations all over the world that will rob you of that which you have heard, that will take your mind away from what you have heard, that will take your heart away from what you have heard. And it's more than just money. And I want you to ask yourself these questions, brothers and sisters. How do you lay treasures here on this earth? Whatever is more precious to you than God. It can be a person. It can be yourself. It can be your career. And yes, it can be money. But stop making money the end all be all. There are far greater things in this world that are taking the hearts and minds of men away from God. Even the calamities of our world are taking men's hearts away from God because they are angry. The Bible says the word that was sown in their hearts, Satan came and took it away. There are thieves that we are to be focused on that are greater than the neighborhood robber who is going to come and take our money and our, our precious things in our houses. We have this house right here that there are spiritual thieves that desire every day to rob us on the greatest gift ever given to mankind. So what I want us to do is look at this thing from a different perspective. Ask yourself this question. How does someone lay treasures here on this earth? By putting their affection and their time and their efforts into things that do not pertain unto eternal life. But then ask yourself this question, professed believer in God. Can somebody functioning as a pastor, an elder, a missionary, a singer, a church chef, a church, um, a, a deacon, youth leader, community service leader? Can someone function in that capacity and still lay treasures here on this earth? Yes. Because the very office they hold may be their treasure. It may be the precious thing that they are keeping, thinking for one minute that they can bribe God by their years of service not realizing they're only doing it for their glory. Brothers and sisters, it's time we start to think. If you're going to think of this lesson, it's time to think of this lesson from the point of view that God desires so that you can get from the lesson what you need to get, realize where you are, and know that you are not safe even when you're a minister of the gospel teaching this word here and the very office you hold is the precious thing that you are laying up for yourself here on this earth. Because many will head depart from me, I know you're not. Because you have not laid up for yourself treasure in heaven. Even those evangelists out there preaching and bringing thousands in to the faith as they say. The thousands that they have brought in may be the very precious things to which they get self-aggrandizement and pride. This is serious business. Take your mind off of money and teach God's people what it means to lay treasures here on this earth and what it means to lay treasure in heaven. Let's look at the problem from a different perspective without having to mention money. Let's begin in the book of James chapter 5. Problem, then solution. Problem, then how we lay treasure in heaven. How we truly lay treasure in heaven for somebody who desperately needs it today. James chapter 5. Let's begin with the problem. 
identify the problem and administer the solution. James chapter 5 from, the, from verse 1. The Bible says, Go to now, he rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. So right there, people take this scripture and they condemn every rich man in the world that you are lost. But the Bible speaks so much more than just what the rich man has accumulated. And so we must read the scriptures and continue to process and see why the Bible says the rich man has heaped treasure together for the last days. Let's see the problem. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. What you have gotten, this is for you. Who have gotten ill-gotten riches. You have manipulated people. You have used people. You have defrauded. You have done more than heap money. When you heap money by defrauding, you are heaping iniquity upon yourself. So the Bible says, you believe you are collecting money that will secure you for your end. But what you are securing is avarice. What you are securing is covetousness. What you are securing is lust. What you are securing is using and abusing and the unloving attitude that you have towards your brethren. These be your treasures. That's why no matter how much your gold shines in the end times, if the gold that you got came at the cost of someone's life, it means nothing to you. He have lived in pleasure in the earth and have been wanton. Read it. Comprehend what God is saying. You have lived in pleasure, enjoying your wealth. And your success. But you have been wanton all your life. Even though you are surrounded with wealth and celebrity. He have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. He have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Is the problem here money? Or is the problem the, may, the way and means by which the man or woman has gotten what they call wealth? And so when you're teaching people, brothers and sisters, Teach people to look beyond everything that they have and look within as to where the problem really lies. Go to the book of Romans chapter 2. The book of Romans chapter 2, we're reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Listen to another version. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things. Is the problem judging? God has called his believers 
to indeed judge, perceive, have discernment in areas of their lives. Test the spirit. That's why he says test the spirit. He says the problem is not the judging. The problem is who is doing the judging. Don't say, don't take judgment to me. Don't ever judge. Judge righteous judgment. The Bible says, don't judge when you know the very thing you're judging for, the very person that you're judging is doing the same thing as you. You are self-righteous. You are sitting on your throne as a judge. And you are heaping to yourself treasures on this earth. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. By the very act of your improper judgment, you are heaping to yourself earthly things. But the God of heaven, who judges based on truth, will bring judgment against such person. And think as thou this. O man that judges them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Do you really think you can impress God by your ability to clean his church from the people you call sinners, put them all out to pasture while you are worse than them? Do you think you're heaping to yourself treasure in heaven? Lord, Lord, I kept the sanctity of your church by putting out all the sinners. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long-suffering not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? It is amazing that those who lack true repentance are always swift to bring judgment against those who they don't even offer a chance at repentance. If you understood repentance and forbearance and long-suffering, you would not be so quick as to dispose people from the very place that God has dispatched them for their salvation. How short-tempered we are when God is long-suffering with us. Do you understand where riches truly lie? In his patience? In his goodness? In his forbearance? And in his long suffering, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart. Listen to the word of God now. What are you heaping for yourself? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath. And revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You're busy playing judge. With improper judgment. And the Bible says all you are heaping for yourself. Is wrath against the day of wrath. Because there is one righteous judgment. And that comes from God who will render to every man according to his deeds. There are some, the Bible says, blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute iniquity upon. And the rest, the Bible says, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than light. And so they will experience the fruit of all their labor. Proverbs chapter 11, 4 and 5 for our last scripture on the problem. Right now you are seeing greater problems than just money. And I hope you're getting that by the power and might of the spirit of the most high God in all his wisdom. 
Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11, 4, 5. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Now then, let's go into laying up treasure in heaven. You cannot give enough money to the church to make your way into heaven. You cannot feed enough poor to pave your way into heaven. My brothers and sisters. But the believer has great assurance in the laying up of treasure in heaven. And I want you to know and understand that right now that will encompass the entire rest of this message chapter by chapter, verse by verse, beginning with the book of First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 18. I expect you to take note. I expect you to pay attention. I expect you to administer this remedy into your life. For those of you who have never understood laying up treasure in heaven, you may have heard it before by the grace and mercies of God. And if you've never heard it before, write each of these scriptures down, study these scriptures, get the, the gist of it by the Spirit of God for your enhancement of learning and for your laying up of treasure in heaven. First Timothy chapter 6 from verse 17, the Bible says, as we said before, the rich man's accumulation of his wealth is not about the money he has. How did he achieve that so-called success? But the Bible says in Second in First Timothy chapter six, seventeen and eighteen, charge them which are rich in this world, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Their brethren trusted in uncertain riches, ill-gotten riches, lying, cheating, stealing, manipulating themselves into wealth. Uncertain riches. These riches do not stand in the end times. The Bible says, but they must trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You are not living and enjoying your earthly riches. You are rich in this world, but you have such a relationship with God that it is not about your riches. It is about enjoying the living in the fullness of God. Then the Bible says, this is what they do, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. They don't live for their money. Their money is given to them by God. They live for God using their money for the benefit of others. And by doing that, the Bible says in verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. So yes, God has a path for the rich of this world. Yes, he does. If one is in submission of him with what God has given him, what God has given him goes to the glory and honor to God by his distribution, by being rich in good works, willing to communicate. He is laying a foundation unto eternal life. Let's go on. Colossians 2. Colossians chapter 2. 1 to 3. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 1 to 3. The Bible reads, For I would that he knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Here is what I want for you, Paul says, 
and any true minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ will want this because their views on people and ministry vastly differ from those who want to make merchandise of you. Those who just see dollar signs on you when you join the church. Those who guilt trip you every Saturday and Sunday for your not putting or not enough putting. Here is what I want, Paul says. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the fullness, sorry, all riches of the full assurance of understanding. I want us to get what the Bible is telling us very carefully. The riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. In whom, that is Christ, in Christ, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The Son, Christ, is the wisdom of God. He has all knowledge, the Bible says. So, Paul writes, we are together in our love, love of Christ. And the Bible says, the riches are the full assurance of our understanding that we have of Christ, his work, and him being in us through his spirit. And so by that understanding, Paul says, we acknowledge what is the mystery of God, the Father, and the Son. Now, let's see what we acknowledge. Colossians chapter 1. One chapter back. What do we acknowledge? Go to verse 26. The Bible says, Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. This was a mystery to David. Mystery to Moses. To Daniel. To Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Lamentations, Hosea, Obadiah, Zephaniah, Malachi. But it is known now to the saints to whom God would make known. You and I are supposed to know this. What is the riches of the glory of this mystery? Among the Gentiles. What is that? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Even some Israelites could not experience this. But now it is revealed even to the Gentiles. And you and I now have the full assurance of knowing that mystery. All riches lie in that mystery. We'll come to understand that very carefully as articulated by the word of God. But you and I are supposed to understand the fullness of the riches of the mystery and assurance that Christ is in you and Christ is in me. After all. He prayed for us to have that treasure in us. I in you, Father. You in me, Father. We in them, Father. And they be rich, Father, with that buried treasure in us. By the Spirit of the Most High God, I pray you're getting this. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, let the scriptures speak as your pens write, as your ears listen, as your minds process, as your heart soaks this in. Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 13. Happy, happy indeed is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. That is supposed to be your experience in Bible study. That is supposed to be your experience in lesson study. 
that is supposed to be your experience after hearing a message from the Lord through a manservant. Every time we open our mouths here, our responsibility is to disseminate wisdom, not man's wisdom, but wisdom from on high. We speak as oracles of God. Even when you receive rebuke and correction, it is the wisdom of God. Happy is the man that finds it. Were you happy when you left Sabbath school class? Knowing you have to give a little more money to show your faith so your heart can automatically change by your giving? Or are you happy to know now that what I am offering you has no dollar figure attached to it? Does it make life feel a little better for you? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the one that gets understanding. You see, when you get wisdom, you apply your heart to understanding. And that's how thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. This is not just passing knowledge. This is investigative knowledge that every believer must engage in so they can learn and be confirmed of it by the Spirit of the Most High. For the merchandise of it, wisdom and understanding of God, the merchandise of it, remember, when Satan was developing the mind of evil and sin was found in him, his merchandise was corrupt. Every part of him was corrupt. His treasures were no longer fit for heaven. He was cast down and he came to man whose inheritance was the world. And he sowed the seed of discontent. He sowed the seed of sin to which man himself sinned. And so now Satan found a place and a place. Satan found a place and a way and an avenue by which his merchandise can continue to be sold. Hence, what is his merchandise? Earthquakes, death, murder, rape, abortion, war, strife. Lying, cheating, stealing, defiled sanctuaries walking all over this world in the personhood of men and women unaware that a savior has come and died for them or aware and ignoring it. The merchandise of the wisdom of God is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain of it than fine gold. Are you hearing the Bible today? She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou can desire are not to be compared to the wisdom of God. And the Bible says her because you're in a relationship. And the Bible says her because a woman has the ability to conceive. So when you're in a relationship with wisdom, the two of you join together, it conceives and brings forth fruit of the womb. By the receiving of the wisdom of God, you display the fruit of the Spirit. Are you getting the heaping up of this thing, brothers and sisters? The book of Isaiah chapter 33. The book of Isaiah 33, 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 33, 5 and 6. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. Read it carefully. Wisdom, knowledge, shall be the stability of thy times. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Oh, this is beautiful. The fear of the Lord 
is his treasure. Hence, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. The Bible says these things are the stability of our times. No matter how the world has regressed in knowledge, no matter how evil continues to mature until its end, brothers and sisters, the sustainability of our times is the wisdom and knowledge that we have, the assurance of salvation that we have, the hope that we have in us beyond this current world stabilizes us every time we see the degenerative aspects of our world stabilizes us when we are persecuted, stabilizes us when we see disasters of epic proportions, stabilizes us as we see governments in disarray. Are you listening to the word of God on what you are heaping up now for heaven? Let no man moving forward tie you and treasure in heaven to your money. The book of Hebrews chapter 11. The book of Hebrews 11 and verse 26. The Bible says Moses was a man of faith. And Hebrews eleven twenty six 26 is a testimony of what Moses deemed to be the laying up of, of treasure. Moses had an opportunity to lay up treasure in Egypt or he had an opportunity to lay up treasure with God. The Bible says for Moses, because many people must understand this as well. Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ. Moses never saw Christ. He esteemed the reproach of Christ. He lived what even the Christ to come would live. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Now, Egypt is more than just gold and silver and precious garments. Egypt is about authority. Egypt is about kingship. Egypt is about status. You understand? Dominance. These things factor when we're dealing with treasure on earth as well. They facilitate the polluting of money. Pride. And all these other things facilitate the pollution of our money. The pollution of our belongings. If I enter into a purchase of a vehicle because I see my brothers and sisters in Christ in need of rides every day after church and I set my heart on buying a vehicle and I buy it for the glory and honor of the brethren, the lesson says, show me what you spend your money on and I will show you where your heart is. Really? My heart was in the right place. And I bought that vehicle to the glory and honor of my brethren. Can you just judge this from the money I spend on a vehicle? Really? That's lazy, brothers and sisters. But I can set my heart on a vehicle because I want to show off for the brethren. And I go purchase that vehicle. That's when that vehicle becomes a snare and a corruption to me because it feeds my pride. Moses esteemed the reproaches of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. When Christ came to this earth, Christ understood that he would die a very violent death. Christ understood and Christ mourned the forsaking the people had towards him and the cursings and the rebukings and the laughing at him. He was more sad for the people than himself. Fear 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, my body is bruised. Yes, my body is broken. Yes, the blood is dripping from every orifice that they have pierced. Yes, their spit is still on me. But they have no idea what they are doing. Moses took the reproach of Christ because he had respect unto the recompense of reward. You and I endure what we endure today, not because we are limited to that persecution, not because we are limited to that sadness, not because we are limited to this world. You and I esteem the reproach of Christ greater riches because we have great recom we have great respect unto the recompense of our reward. We know and believe where we are going. We know and believe that a place has been prepared for us. We know and believe that Jesus will come again. We know and believe that though we die, we live again. We know and believe that if we are alive at the coming of Christ, we shall be changed. We know and believe that there will be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness and it will never pass away. That is what we have respect to. Words. That's why we are able to endure in this time, for we know what's to come. That's why you don't pay money for this. That's why this thing is the treasure that you have secure in heaven. You lay up. Your buried treasure is within you. Your treasure, where your heart is, is secure in heaven. Luke chapter 12. We're coming down to the crescendo. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 from verse 29. As Matthew 6.19 put it earlier, we will look at the perspective of the book of Luke Chapter 12 and verse 29. The Bible says, And seek not what he shall eat or what he shall drink, neither be he of doubtful mind. The Bible says, Yes, you worry about food and drink, but doubt concerning my ability to take care of you seeps into the other areas of your life. That's why the Bible says when you enter into prayer to God, don't be a man who's all over the place. Don't be a man who's unstable, a man who's hot and cold. Don't be wavering. For the man that wavereth will receive nothing of God. The Bible says you have assurance in your Christian life. So if you are living in doubt, it is clear that the Spirit of God, you are not under conviction by God's Spirit or of Christ and His Father. You are living in fear. Perfect love casts out fear. You know that I am able to do everything that I tell you that I am going to do. He says, Don't be of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. The very act of the simple things that we seek after. He says, even clothe, even eat and drink. Normal things that the human being needs for daily survival. Even the desire for these things and not trust God to provide for them can lead to doubt and taking the eyes away from God. He says, all those things to the nation of the world seek after. God never says it's wrong to provide for your family, eat and drink. But God says, let nothing in your pursuit of eat and drink prohibit you from giving me your all. And your father knoweth that he have need of these things. If I ask you to pledge your life to me, 
Do you not think that I can make a way for my children to receive their needs? He says, but rather seek he the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, before we go to the final scripture and before we go on, go with me quickly to the book of Revelation. I believe it's Revelation 12. It's not here with, in my notes, but I'm pretty sure it's here in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. Revelation 12, 10. The Bible says after Satan was cast down to the earth, the Bible says his angels were cast out with him. There was a voice from heaven saying, now is come salvation, now is come strength, now is come the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ, because the accuser, the accuser is cast down. The liar, the thief, the one who came to rob people of eternal life as he robbed Adam and Eve of eternal life. But now it's come the kingdom of our God. So the Bible says, if you go back to Luke chapter 12, the Bible says in Luke chapter 12, as we continue from verse, yes, uh, from verse 31, but rather, Seek he the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So who are we seeking? Who are we seeking? Who's the kingdom of our God? Christ, Yeshua, son of the most high God. Seek him. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's why Jesus says, in my father's house are many mansions. I go and prepare this place for you. It is my father's pleasure. No man cometh unto me, but by, no man cometh unto God, but by Jesus. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses against them but restoring them. So the Bible says, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have. Give alms. Provide yourselves. Bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The crescendo of it all. Yeshua the Christ, Jesus Christ, is at the right hand of the Most High Yah, his Father. Where he is the kingdom of God. Where he is, where your precious thing is, the son of God, there will your heart be also because he's in you and you are in him and you, my brothers and sisters and I, are enjoying this place on earth as simply strangers and pilgrims, but our inheritance is secure in heaven. Our treasure is laid up in heaven if we're in Christ. No thief can approach him. He made a show of them openly. He blasted the greatest thief here on this earth, Satan. When he rose from that grave, all power is given unto me. I saw... Satan falling like lightning to the ground. Now is the prince of this world judged. Now is the thief condemned. Satan can't approach him. Satan can rob you of your place in heaven when you're in Christ. Moth doesn't corrupt it because it has no expiration date. Is your treasure there? Are we in Christ right now as he is? So are we in this world? If he dwells in us and if his love is perfected in us, that's how you lay treasure in heaven, brothers and sisters. Our final scripture is 1 Peter 1. That should bring it to a completion this morning. 
As always, in your further studies, you can glean so much, much more than you've even heard this morning. Let's bring it to an end. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again Listen to the Bible. Unto a lively hope. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Born again. Not after the will of man. But of God. Not of corruptible seed. But incorruptible. Not of silver and gold but the precious blood of Jesus Christ to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you and me. Who the you? Who's the me? We, who are kept right now, this day, this month, this year, and every day of life after it, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So. Wherein. He greatly rejoice. Though now for a season. If need be. Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Simply put. For the trying of your faith. And your faith. Is more precious than gold. That perisheth. Though it be tried with fire. It might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Does that sound much better? What I have just articulated for the last few minutes? Or what I read to begin this program today? I won't even read it again to get it back in your minds. I want you to take this with you, my brothers and sisters, and I want you to apply it to yourselves as I do mine. And may we all lay up treasure in heaven, in Christ, as is in us. And as sure as you are seeing me speak on a screen this morning, we shall all be saved who hold fast this hope until the end. Father in heaven, there is so much that is being taught today. However, you have not left this world ignorant of your truth. Though many are making a mess of the teaching of the word. Though many are not rightly dividing the word of truth, you still have your servants out there who are doing it all over the world. Truth never fails. Today I pray for those within the sound of my voice live, and I pray for those who are watching this program after it is live. You have led them to this video and you have led this video to them for the very reason of instructing them. And so today I pray that they have clearly understood your plan for them in the laying up of treasure in heaven. Many has been so taught they have been trying to give to make it there. Let today be the day where that bondage chain be broken from their lives. Heavenly Father, I pray today that your people has received your word. I pray today that you will confirm within them that it is the word of truth. 
And I pray that once they have confirmed that it is the word of truth, their responsibility now is to put it into practice. Be in Christ. As Christ is in them through the baptism of his spirit. And I pray, dear Father, that all their learning will be done because they have an unction from the Holy One. And they would need that no man teach them. But they will grow from babes to adulthood, mature believers in the faith, stand firm in the faith, be perfected in your love, ready to be revealed at the last time the great hope of salvation. I thank you, Lord, for the ability to speak in this morning. For you have showed it to me, and I have the responsibility as well to live it. Help us all. Wherever we are weak, dispel that weakness from our lives in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus. And I pray that we will walk in the light as he is in the light and thus have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ which cleanses us from all sin will continue to perfect us. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory for this is your magnificent work done simply through this vessel. One that you have remade for your purpose. We thank you for the hearing and answering of this prayer. I want to lift up anyone who's praying right now for themselves or for a loved one or for a friend. May you hear and answer our prayers by the mighty name of your son, Yeshua the Christ, we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My friends, I thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that your hearts have been blessed with the word of God and you will go and do accordingly. I pray that you will have a blessed rest of your day and we look forward to a new week to come. God bless you and as I always say, on Saturdays are a time where people may look at different programs for different plates of food. Make sure what you get is the solid word of God, a plate of bread and meat and living water. And eat it with joy. Accept nothing less, my brothers and sisters. May God bless you. May God keep you. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for sharing this video. Thank you for your thumbs up on YouTube. That will help YouTube spread this video around. Those who have not subscribed to the channel that you are watching this video on right now, may you hit the subscribe button and the little bell which notifies you every time we are live. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Until we see you again, hopefully... By the grace and mercies of God, we will be live next Saturday for the continuation of our series on the sanctuary in you. Again, we love you. Thank you for your prayers and your support. God be with each and every one of you. Till we meet again.